What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about templates. So a powerful tool for C++ programmers is param parametratized types or templates. So templates are useful for a library containing ma many number of routines such as um, like, you know, adopt into definition of C++. So today we're going to learn about what a template is, how templates can be used, how to create class templates, how, how to create t function templates, and what STL is. So what are templates? Well, you saw that in week two, you could build a parts list object and use it to create a parts catalog. And if you want to build on the parts list object to make a list of cats, you have a problem. The parts list only contains about parts. Well, to solve this problem, you can create a list based class and you could then cut and paste most of the parts list class into the cats list declaration. Later, we talked about how like you can make a list of car objects and you in order to make a new class, you have to copy and paste. Well, needless to say, this is not a good solution. So over time, you can expect the list class and its derived classes will be extended. The task of making certain that all of these changes are propagated to all the related classes could quickly become a nightmare. So alternatively, alternatively you could inherit class from part, which would not make any sense. You could create a list class that would contain something like object and inherit everything from the object class. However, this creates strong typing and makes it harder for the compiler to enforce correctness. And what you really want to do is create like a family of related classes, but only difference is the type that you're operating on. So the creation and use of templates can solve this problem. Although templates were not part of the C++ original, they are now part of an integrated part of the language. So like all C++, they are type safe and very flexible. They can, however, be intimidating to new C++ programmers after you understand them. However, you will see that they are a very powerful feature of the language. So the type templates enable you to create a class that have the type of the things to it works uh, to, um, to be changed. For example, you could create like show how the compiler can make a list of a type of thing rather than creating a set type of list. A parts list is a list of all parts. A cast list is a list of all cats. The only way in which they differ is a type of the thing in the list. So with templates, the type of the thing on the list becomes a parameter to the definition of the class. So you could create a family of classes from the template and then each of them have a different type. So this is good because you, it's basically a generic thing where you could now have just the different types of objects. You could have like a list of different types of objects and that's way better than like having cats being a subclass of parts list, right? So a common component of the virtually for all C++ libraries is an array class. So you know what it was about array. It would be inefficient to create a class for integers and another one for double and another one for animals. So the templates allow to use a single parameter array class and you can specify the type that the object will be for each instance of the array. So although the STL provides a standardized set of container classes, including arrays, lists, and so forth, the best way is, is to learn about templates is to create your own. So and then we're going to learn about how to write your own template class so that you can fully understand how templates work. In a commercial program, however, you would probably use STL. So instantiation is the act of creating a specific type from a template and the individual classes are called instance of a template. So parameter templates provide you the ability to create a general class and pass types as parameters to that class to build specific instances. So before you can instantiate a template, however, you need to find one. So how, how do you build a template definition? Well, you could easily do it by just having template and then class T and then you need to surround them with these uh, greater, uh, less than symbols and the greater than symbols. So in this case, uh, template and class are keywords that you could use. T is a placeholder, like any variable name, and as such, it can be any name you desire. However, either T or type is generally used. The value of T will be a data type. So because of the keyword class can be confusing when using this context, you can alternatively use the keyword type name. So type name, a template type name, you could do like that. So uh, here, uh, in today's lesson, we'll see the you see the keyword class being used. However, because it is what you'll see more often in programs that will be created, the keyword template, however, is clearer clearer to indicate what you're defining parameter to be a primitive type rather than a class. So going back to the example of creating your own array class, array list actually, you can use the template uh, statement to declare a parameterized type for the array list class. You could do this to create a template for an array shown here. So you could have template less than sign class T greater than sign and it declares a template and a parameter and then you could have a class array and then you have these greater than or, uh, the, your class in here and then you have your stuff in here. So that basically this creates a template and the parameter. So this is the code for declaring a class temp array 
and the keyword template is being used for every declaration. Like with functions, the parameters are the things that will change within each instance and the rate template being created in the preceding example if you want to type the objects stored in the array to be changeable. So one instance might be stored an array of instances, instances, another one is an array of animals. So in this case, the keyword class is being used followed by the identifier T. So here I told you about this, you know, if, if you want to create like an array of like many different types, this is, that's what te templates are for. They help you create, uh, like, you know, array lists of, I don't know, anything that you want, like an animal or an integer or whatever. So now th th because they have this template in this first statement, it, it helps create that array. So, here, uh, the template should be able to accept any data type as a class for T's. You could you could set the type of your template when declaring a variable that will be an instance of it. This can be done using the format class uh, less than symbol type and less greater than symbol instance. In this case, the class name is the name of your template class. Instance is the name of your instance or the object you're creating. Type is the is exactly the data type you want to use for the instance you're creating. Okay, so if you want to create a you want to create an array of integers, right? You would do array greater or less than sign integer, and then this is the name of your array that you want to create. And then here, if you want to create an array of animals, you do this, and then the name of your array of animals. So the object of an array is an array of integers, the object is an array of animals. Okay, so be aware that this isn't a complete program, rather focus how templates you define. Okay, so here they, they have a, a template of an array class. Okay, so we, they you include STD. Remember, this isn't this isn't that good, okay? because you're including everything in STD into the, basically uh, using namespace STD includes everything into the current scope, okay? And that current scope is this global scope, so that's literally including everything in the STD library. Normally, you should not do this in the workforce, but this would, this is, in this example, they did it. Okay, so then they did hashtag include IO streams, they use cout and cn. Uh, do they ever use that? It's strange. Uh, okay, they never use that, whatever. Uh, then they have the tech, uh, the template class and declares the template and the parameter. And here's they have a class. Okay, so in this class they have constructors, constructors, destructors. Uh, so the constructor they create a, they have instance variable of the size, and they initialize the size. Okay, so this this constructor initializes the size of the array. And here they have the um, a reference. I'm guessing it's a copy constructor, based on it takes a reference of an another array and they basically copies every value of that array into the current value. And they have a destructor array, which basically just frees the memory of the array. So then they have the overload the equals operator. I'm guessing they're gonna change something for the equals. Um, they overload the brackets operator. Okay, so that's just, that's just, okay. That uh, I don't know why they do that, but I guess, okay. This just returns the, the it returns the array at, at the specific value. So here at the specific index offset returns the array at this specific index. I don't know why they overloaded it, the, this, the brackets operator, because normally an array allows you to do that. But I guess they just did that anyway. Um, get size just returns the size, and then they have two instance variable. <clears throat> One is the size, which allows you to create the size of the array. Here is the array type. It's a pointer to a the type of your declaring. So here, they, they uh, if you want to create a type of an integer, the next one is a pointer to the a pointer to another integer. Okay, so there's no output. Rather, this is a definition of a scaled down template. So the de de the declaration of the template begins at line five of the keyword template, followed by the parameter. In this case, the, the parameter is identified to be a type by the keyword class, and the identifier t is used to represent the param per parameterized type as Mentioned earlier, you could all have the use the type name instead of a class. Okay, so that's true. You should be uh, okay. Um, the operator would be expected to return a reference to. The, okay, so that that's okay. So when the instance of uh, these were this. Okay, they don't actually explain how the why they created the um, a pointer to another type of T. I'm guessing they want the only way to reference. Um, yeah, I don't know why they did this. I guess this is the next value of the array. That would make more sense. Yeah, it's probably the next value. Okay. Um, so they have a pointer. I'm guessing this is the pointer to the next value, T. Because they have an integer, and they want to uh, get the next value as well. So they have a they created a pointer to that next value. Okay. 
Um, yeah, they don't explain that. Templates used for reference. Okay, so the instance of it is the always used with the return the reference to an animal. Okay, so this they overloaded it. When an instance of it is replaced. Okay, they just overloaded this. Okay. Using the name within the class declaration, the word array can be used without further qualification. Elsewhere in the program, this class is referred to as array T. For example, if you do not want to write a constructor for this class declaration, when you declare this function, you must write this. Okay, so if you do not want to, if you do not write the constructor within the class declaration, then you have to do this. Uh, the array can be used without further qualification elsewhere in the program. This class is referred to. Okay, um, I don't know what they mean by that. Because this is part of a template the declaration, the first line of the code is required to identify the name, the type for the function class T. So I'm guessing is that they didn't want to use array for some reason here. So they just using the name. Yeah, if you don't write the constructor within the class decoration, yeah, you could write it this way. I don't know why anyone would want to write it this way. This is just basically saying, okay, in this array class, I'm going to uh, initialize the size. No, for the, okay, no, I'm going to have, I'm going to use, call this function size, right? And then I'm going to declare what it does here. They create a new, new T and then they loop through it and then set everything to zero. I guess this is their, their declaration. Mm. All right, so this is required to identify the type of the class T. On the second line, you can see that the template name is array, and the def function name is array size. Okay, yeah. In addition, you see that the function takes an integer parameter. Okay, the remainder of the function is the same as it would be for a non-template function, except that anywhere the array type would be used, the parameter T is used. You can see this on the line T declaring a new array. Okay, so anywhere the array type would be used, the parameter T is used. Okay, yeah, yeah. So if you create an array uh, here in this function, they anywhere the T is used for like integer or, or animal, or whatever, the uh, the T is used. Like instead of having animal or integer or whatever, they use the T instead. Uh, okay. Um, Implementing the template after you have a template defined, you'll want to use it. The full implementation of the array class requires an implementation of the copy constructor equals and so on. So here provides a code for your array template as well as, well as a simple driver program that uses the template. So here they have implementation of the template array. Set default size of hen. Class array, uh, class animal. Okay, so this is just everything over the animal class, the weight, stuff like that constructor. Um, here, then, then they declared a template and the parameter and the class being parameterized. So class array. Okay, and then now they, it's the same thing. Um, this time they're, okay, to implement, so now it's the same thing, but here to implement the constructor, I see what they're doing. Okay, so then, they use the, they write the class name of array T, which is this template thingy, the, the class name array. And then they put the, the, the uh, left say on T and then the template name, and then they have the colon colon. And then in order to represent the array to initialize, to implement the constructor, they have, have the constructor's name here. And then they initialize the size using this way, this way to initialize it. Remember how to initialize constructors in the in function uh, declaration, right? You could initialize them this way using its size and size. It is a huge hassle though. Uh, it's kind of unreadable, I guess, but whatever. They set P type equals a new T size and then the constructor they're creating and then they set the default value. Okay, so then they also, to implement the copy constructor, they done the same thing, um, colon, colon, array. Same thing, uh, get the size, create a new type, given the new array. Oh, wait, no, this isn't my fault, my fault, my fault. This is not the, it's not a pointer to another T type. This is supposed to represent the array. So rather than using, okay, they really should have made this an array. 
but instead they made it a pointer. So then they initialize the array this way. Uh, where do they initialize it? I guess in this constructor, I guess. They initialize it like that, but they really should not have done that this way. They should have made it an array to be more clear. But I guess in this case, because pointers are also arrays, like I told you about that. Pointers are also arrays, so that's why they did it this way. A pointer can be an array yeah, as long as they initialize the, tell you like the size of how much you're doing. That's why. Okay, so here, that's why, th that's what they did. They said P type, they create a new, new array, T of size. And that what that is, is that it creates a new, it allocates memory for the size of the array, the size of the pointer. So that makes an array. Okay. This is, because it's a pointer, right? He, they could allocate size to it, and that basically makes it an array. So pointers are also arrays, by the way. I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear before. Okay, so they do do that, and then they, the constructors of the type they're creating, okay, then they, they have a copy constructor, and that just copies everything, create a new array, and then they get this, its size, and they copy everything to over. Overload the equals operator. If it's pointing to the reference, they just automatically return the current object. Otherwise, they delete the delete the previous, the free the memory of the previous one. Then they get the size. And the reason why they do this is because remember that time about the equals. Uh, if uh, it's something to do with the, uh, they point to the same one or something. So that's why they free the they free the pointer. Okay, so now it's. Uh, the current one, I'm guessing. Yeah, they free they free if if it's already has data in it. So what they do is they, they free the current, the current one, and then they initialize the size of the the our current one to equal their size, and then they they instantiate a new new array to create a new array, allocate memory for a new array using the new, and then they copy everything over. The reason why they delete the old one because when you set something equal to another thing. You're deleting the old one, like your old values get deleted. That's why. Uh, the reason why they check this is because if it's pointing to the exact same one, then they just return the pointer. Like if they're the same ones, it doesn't matter. Because if you set them equal to that, that, and you're freeing memory that's shared, so that that's bad. So if if you if if they're the same one, just return the data to the current one. And yeah, that's what they did here. Uh, they like copy everything over, and then they they return the current object the data that the current object is pointing to because this points to the current object so then the star this returns the data that the thing that the thing is currently is pointing to and that's the uh the array the pointer a p type p type right here this is this is their array remember pointers are arrays in this case because they allocate memory for the pointer so now it holds a certain amount of space that's why um okay then they have a driver program they instantiate an array of integers, an array of animals. Then they have a pointer array, not pointer array, a pointer to an animal. Let's see, do they allocate memory for that? Yeah, they do. Okay, so they allocate, they set it equal to a, they create, they point it to a new animal, okay, with this certain size, I guess. And they here they fill out the array, the array. Yeah, they fill out this array. To have the values of i times two, and they do that the same thing here, and they f delete the p animal. Oh wait, no, they set the the animal array to point to the current p animal. Okay, so this there's really no need to do this. Can't they just set allocate memory to new animal like that, like this way? I don't know. Okay, then they free it. Uh, okay, then they just loop through and print out all the data for every array. Okay, um, that was that was all they did. Uh, I'm not gonna explain it again. Okay, so now passing instantiated template objects to functions. If you wanna pass an array object to a normal function, you must pass a particular instance of an array, not a template. So to create a function that can receive a specific instance of an array, you declare the type as follows. Void some function array type and then the am, uh, ampersand this is a reference I think uh, okay where some function is the name of the a function you are passing the array object to and the type is the type of the object you're creating so therefore some function takes an integer as a parameter you can write 
void some function array and it's a reference to it. Okay, but you cannot write void some function t reference. Okay, yeah, the, the reason why is because that this could be anything, t could be anything. So when you, when you want to create the type of the array you're passing in, it has to have the specific type because because t, t is the template just means, okay, this T means anything that you could pass in. Like you couldn't have created an array of integers, doubles, floats, and uh, I don't know, animals. Remember integer is an integer. Uh, an integer is just like a, a number. A double is just like a number with a decimal point, but it, ha it can store longer ones. A floats are like numbers with like, it's like a smaller v version of a double, but it could, it's, it's just stores like, you know, decimals, integer, uh, decimals as well. And yeah, stuff like that, even booleans. Um, so yeah, because T can hold anything, you cannot write this. It creates an error because there's no, and they have no idea, no idea what T is. So you, uh, you also can't write like that. That that just doesn't make sense. Okay, the class, there there's no class array, and only the templates and instances. To create non-member functions that have the same advantages of re templates, you can declare a template function. This is a custom accomplished to a, in a certain manner to declaring a template class and defining a template member function. First, you indicate that your function is a template and then you use that template parameter where you otherwise would have used a class name or uh, use a type or a class name. So they have template class and then they my template function and then that's it. Uh, in this example, the function my template function is declared to be a template function by the declaration on the top line. Note that the template functions can have any name the same as other functions can. So template functions can also take instances of, of the template in addition to the parameterized form. The following is an example. Okay, so here they, okay. Um, yeah. First you get into the function. Okay, so you could have a template function the difference between here and the other one is that here they created a template. They instantiate the as a template. They put the template in the class T. So that means that it could take in anything. So yeah, that means this function can take in an array type, but it, the type could be anything. That's what it, this means. Um, yeah, you could also do this as well. It, this means they, they have two arrays. One could be a type of anything. Another one is a type of uh, an array of type integers. Okay. Okay. Template and friends. We learn about template classes can declare three types of friends. Non template friend class or function, a general template friend class or function, a type specified template class or function. The following sections covers the two, the first two of these. So the non template friend classes and functions, it is possible to declare an array and any class or function to be a friend to your template class. Each instance of the class will be treated the friend as properly as if the declaration of friendship has been made in a particular instance. They add a, here they add a trivial friend function intrude to the template that de definition of the array class. Okay, because intrude is a friend, it could access a private instance variable. Because intrude is not a template function, it can only be passed as an array of type in, excuse me. Okay, so here they have um, and they have their class of animal, initialize everything in the constructor. Okay, here then they have template class, declare the template and the parameter and then the class array. Here then they have the constructors, the operators that they're doing, and they have a friend function, okay? That means they have access to all the instance variables, if the private ones, and yeah. But it's a type integer. Why? Why didn't they make it a template. Okay, where's the implementation of their friend class? Uh, where's the friend? Friend, 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 friend. Intrude. Okay, and intrude. Oh, all they did was it's not a template. can only be used with int arrays. Okay, intrude into private data. Okay, so all they do is they just print out everything. But th keep in mind, this is an integer array though. So if, if this is not an integer, then they can't use it. If t wasn't Given as an integer, they can't really use it. Let's see what they, how they did it. Um, okay, so they created an integer array, created an array of animals called the zoo. Create a pointer to an animal. Declared a pointer to an animal. Fill in the arrays. Okay, they 
uh, they fill the integer array with i times 2. And that means that it's 0 times 2, then 1 times 2, then 2 times 2, then 3 times 2, all the way up to the size. Um, the the, the array.get size, that's the default size. I'm guessing that's 10 from what I saw earlier. Yeah, default size 10. So that loops through 10, goes over 10 times. And then, uh, let's see, what else do they do? They allocate memory on the heap for the pointer. Okay, to point to a new animal that has, that's basically i times three, which is has the value of zero times three, then one times three, and then whatever. Whereas, um, let me see, p animal. Let me see the animal constructor. Um, int, oh, it's okay. So the initialize its weight. The animal constructor initializes its weight. Okay, so then it initializes its weight. Then they <clears throat> to have i times three, uh, which is zero times three, one times three, two times three, up to the ten, and then they create the instead of the zoo using the index at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they set that equal to the data that the, this pointer was pointing to. So th this pointer allocated memory. Of an animal to have it point to an animal onto the heap right so then this star p animal basically says this point now points to the data that the pointer is pointing to which is this animal okay so then the zoo will have that um then they loop through the size they print out everything of the zoos display okay let's see how they how do they use the friend function okay so they only could call the array they called the intrude with the array. Okay. So they didn't, they didn't even try to, okay. Yeah. So because, uh, intrude is a friend function that, but it only could take in, um, uh, integer arrays. They called it with this integer array, the array. So that that's what they do. And then that prints out all the things here. Okay. Um, general template class friend class or a function. It would be helpful to add a display operator to the array class so that the values could be sent to an output stream and treated appropriately based on their type. One approach is to declare a display operator for each possible type of array, but this undermines a whole point of having made array a template. So the way to do this is have the insertion operator work for any type of array. So they did O stream operator left left he this to make this work the operator needs to be declared in a template function like this now the uh, now the operator is a template function you need to only provide implementation so this shows the template uh, needed to extend for this declaration it provides the implementation of the less less operator um, so I'm guessing they're overloading the operator let's see where do they okay so they overloaded this operator in order to print out stuff use the o stream okay so here they where is it um yeah okay here they overloaded it and so they just loop through the sides and then print out everything in the array and then they return the output wait what oh okay okay my fault they have an o stream object which is, which is a reference they overload this operator and they pass in the the output, the O stream output, the O stream object, right? Called output, and then they pass in the array. They loop through the array's size, then they put everything into the output, in this output object. They put everything into this output object from with these brackets and then the I, and then they put the array at i which is the contents at the specific index of the array which is so like if you have 10 objects then the contents of at each specific index would be at like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so they put they go through all that put that into this output object so then when then they return the output so now the, it, this would display all of the values of the array that's what it should do. 
And yeah, that's what it does. Here's the entire array. It outputs all this stuff. Okay, so then now you have using template items. You can treat template items as you would for any other type. You can pass them as parameters, either by reference or by value. You can return them as the return values of the functions, also by value or by reference. So this demonstrates how to pass template objects. Okay, so what do they do? They have an animal class. Okay, they have the friend operator. Overloaded this. No, not, not friend operator. They overloaded the greater, greater. Well, I mean, less, less, less than operator in order to use C out or whatever. I'm guessing that's what it. The only reason to do that is to use C out. Okay. Um, okay, and then they they put it into the stream, the O stream, the wait, uh, they wait, and then they return the stream. Okay. Um, I don't know what they they were trying to talk. What they were talking about. Um, most of the right classes left that to save space. Strip down. Uh, they have the insertion operator allow the printing of the animals. I could see. This simply pr prints out the weight of the animal. Okay, so to print out the animals, if you just print out the animal, C out. Wait, wait, where's C out? Where's the main function? Okay, so that it, they had an array. Excuse me. It just fills in <laughs> values, arbitrary values. Yeah. Okay, and then animal fill function and yeah animal fill function that just fills it in with animals with values from 0 to 100 no, no 0 1 200 no 0 100 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 okay with the weights of the animals and then yeah they fill out the animals. Now they, because they overloaded the uh, greater, the less than less than operator, uh, what is it called, insertion operator, now they could just print out the integer array. And it just prints out all the integer arrays. And they could do that for the, they could use C out and then print out the integer array. And that would print out all the everything in the integer array. They could also do C out and then print out everything in the animal array. Okay, so yeah, that was pretty much it. You could use specialized functions. If you uncomment the animals, constructors, and destructs, you'll find unanticipated extra constructions and de destructs of the animals. When an object is added to an array, the object's default constructor is called. The array constructor, however, goes on to assign zero to the value of each member of the array. Um, if we write some animal zero, you call the default operator. This causes a temporary object to create using the constructor, which takes in an integer zero. This temporary is used on the right side of the operator is then destroyed. This is an unfortunate waste of time because animal object has already been initialized. However, you can't remove this line because the integers are not automatically initialized to a value of zero. The solution is to teach the template not to use this constructor for animals, but not to use a spe special animal constructor. You could provide an explicit implementation for the animal class as indicated in here. This type of the specification is a special specialization of the template. So what do they use instead of calling the regular constructor? Because they created a copy every single time. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. Where, where, where do they do that? Fill it in. Animal fill in. Okay. Well, I, d I don't see where they changed that. So I'm just going to ignore what the, they said. Um, okay, you can create static members and templates. A template can be declared static data members. A unique set of static data is created for each static class type. It can be declared from the template. That is, if you add a static member from the array class, you have one such member per type, one for all the arrays of animals, another for all the arrays of integers. So they here they added a static member and a static function to the array class. Um, where do they do that? Where do they do that? They should really change this book. Where do they change the static? Oh, okay. So they have a static, okay. Int number of rays. Okay. And then they, here. Okay. So they initialize its number of rays to zero. And they do that by doing int array, the class of the thing. And then they do less than, and then T, and then greater than, colon, colon, its number of rays equal to zero. That's what they did. Okay. 
And then they... <coughs> mm, yeah. Add the number of raids by one every single time. That's pretty cool. It's the same thing as regular. Okay. Um, do you use templates when you have a concept that can operate across objects of different classes or different primitive types? Do you use parameters to template functions to narrow their instances to be type safe? Do you use statics when templates are needed? Okay, uh, the STL, as I said, there's no point of reinventing the wheel because STL became popular. STL is a standard C library. Um, they have a bunch of container classes, vectors, lists, queues, stacks. STL also includes a number of common algorithms between sorting and searching. The goal of STL is to, pr is to give you an alternative to re in instead of reinventing the wheel for the common requirements. STL is tested and debugging at high performance and is free. Okay, it's also reusable. Okay, so a container is an object that holds other objects. The STL library provides a series of container classes that are powerful tools that help C++ developers handle common programming tasks. So the two types of STL container classes are sequential and sequence and associative. Sequence containers are designed to provide sequence and random access to their members or elements. Associative are optimized ask access to their elements by key values. Okay. Um, so you could use something called vector. Uh, you could use, so normally you could use arrays to store and act as a number of elements. The elements in array are the same type and are accessed by index. But the STL provides a container class vector that behaves like an array, but it's more powerful and safer. So a vector is a container optimized to provide a fast access to its elements by index. The container vector class is defined in the header file vector using creating a namespace. Uh, the vector can grow itself as necessary. So normally the problem about arrays is that if I create an array of 10 elements, I only have 10 elements. Like I can't add a new array, a new value to the array unless I recreate the array copy all the old values to it, and then set that uh, array to point to the new array. So I don't want to do that. So the a vector is easier because then you could easily grow the values in, a, in the array. So once you have 10 objects, the vector is full. You could add another object to the vector. You could automatically increase its capacity so it could accommodate an eight, 11th object. This is how it's defined, class vector. And well, this is how the, the class vector is defined. Uh, when you in initialize a vector, you don't have to do that. And this is just how the class vector is defined. Okay, uh, the first argument is a type of uh, elements in the vector. The second argument is an allocator class. Allocators are memory managers responsible for the memory allocation, deallocation of elements for the containers. The concept and implementation of allocators are advanced topics that are beyond the scope of the book. By default, the elements are created using the new operator and then using the delete operator. The default class is uh, okay. Uh, okay. So if you want to create a vector, you could just do this vector less than int greater than v int. This creates a vector of holding of integer values. Uh, you could do the same thing for float. Usually you have you would have some idea as to how many elements a vector will contain. For instance, suppose that in your school the maximum number of students is 50. To create a vector 50, you would create want to create a vector to be large enough to contain 50. So you would just do vector student math class 50. And that's what it would do. Compile or allocate enough spaces for the for 50 students, each element is created using default constructor student student, and then the number of elements in a vector can be retrieved using a member function size. So then you you just use size dot size returns 50. Another member's capacity tells you how many elements a vector can accommodate before its size needs to be increased. We'll see this later. A vector is to be empty if no element is in the vector. That is the vector's size is zero. So to make it easier to test whether a vector is empty, the vector class provides a member function empty. Evaluates to true if that vector is empty. To assign a student object here to the math class, a subsequent subscri subscripting vector is used. Okay, so you could access values at the specific index just like an array. Just have the the these these brackets. Subscript starts at zero. Okay, it's the same thing as array. To get the age, you do not get age. Uh, vectors grow automatically when you add more elements. Uh, okay, um, to add an element. One way to allo uh, add a new element to the vector is one of them is called pushback. So this, if you do pushback, it appends a new element to the end of the vector. So now Sally would be at, because there's 50 elements, if you do pushback, math class dot pushback, Sally, that would put it in the 50 first. So, no, no, it would put it at the 50th, okay? It now has 51 students, elements. The reason why it would put it at 50th is because, um, 
it's n minus 1. The number of elements is always n minus 1 for the index. So at the 51st, uh, 51st, uh, 51st student, right, the index would be the 50th. So the math, math class has 51 elements, but Sally is placed at the math class at 50. For this function to work, our student class must define a copy constructor. Otherwise, this pushback function will not be able to make a copy of the object Sally. STL does not specify the number of elements in a vector. The compiler vendors are in better position to make this decision. The vector class provides a number of functions that tells you what this magic number is in your compiler, max size. Okay, this demonstrates the members of the vector class I haven't discussed so far. You'll see the string class to simplify handling of the strings. For more details about the string class, check your compilers. Okay, so here they created a student. Let me see where they to create a vector. Okay, to make sure it's a vector, they did template this, and then they pass in vector and uh, type that school class. Okay, so they create an alias for a vector student. Wow. So whenever they see school class, it refers to vector student. So they create a vector student. Okay, so they created four students. They created a vector student of empty class. They renamed it school class. So it's school class, empty class. So they print out the empty class, then they show vector of the empty class. Okay. And, uh, wow, okay. This is just showing how it works. Okay. Um, show vector is just printing out everything in the vector. That's all they're doing. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Okay, so there's something called a list container. A list container is a container designed to be optimal when you're inserting and deleting elements. List containers defined in the header file list in STD. The list class is implemented as a doubly linked list where each node has links to the previous node and the next node in the list. Okay, so we'll talk about that more in the data structures part of uh, C++. But for now, the list class has all the member functions. Just, just know what doubly linked list is, okay? For now, the list class has all the member functions provided by the vector class. As you have seen in week two in review, you can traverse the list by following the links Provide it in each node. Links are implemented using pointers. Okay. Okay, this is just traversing a... Okay, so do they use an... It okay, so to traverse a list, they use something called an iterator. Iterator is a generalization of a pointer and attempts to avoid the dangers of a pointer. You can dereference an iterator to retrieve the node to which it points. Okay. Okay, so here's how they use an iterator. Integer list... Okay, so they say the name of the list, right? And they do const iterator ci... I'm guessing that's the name of the iterator, and they set equals to begin. Okay, then they while it's not dot the list dot end, they add one. So it's basically saying I go from the beginning, and while it's not the end, I add one. The list, and then I print everything in the the pointer of the CI, the data that this is pointing to. Okay. Um, okay. So there's a stacks container. Okay. A uh, stack is basically Think about a stack as like, like a stack of plates. You only have access to the first, the, to the top of the plate. Yeah. So if you stack a bunch of plates up, you only have access to the top of the plate, right? And you could only remove the, um, yeah, pretty much you, to get to the next plate, you have to pop the first plate off to get to the next one. That's what stacks are. So stack is a continuously allocated block that can grow and shrink at the back end. Elements in an array, uh, so they're talking about back end because the top of the plate is the back end. So uh, elements of the stack can be accessed or removed from the back. You can use similar characteristics and sequence containers, notably vector and DQ. And any sequence container that supports back and push and pop operators can be used to implement a stack. Most of the other container methods are not required for the stack and are therefore not exposed by the stack. So the STL stack template is designed to contain any type of objects. The only restriction is that all elements must be of the same type. Okay, so stack is last and first out. Data structure, the classic analogy for a stack is this. A stack is like a stack of dishes at a salad bar. You add to the stack by placing a dish on the top and you take the from the stack by popping the top dish. Mo the most recently added at the stack off the top. By convention, the open end of the stack is also referred to as the top of the stack, and operations carried to the stack are called push and pop. Wow, okay. 
Qs. DQ. A DQ is like a double-ended vector. It inherits the vector class efficiency of reading and writing. A DQ container class provides optimized front end and back end uh, operations. These operations are implemented similarly to the list container class where memory allocations are engaged only for new elements. This feature of the DQ class eliminates the need to out reallocate the whole container to a new memory location as the vector class does. So therefore DQs are suitable for application and for insertion at both ends. So DQ helps you insert areas at the front and at the back. It's like an array, but it's like a vector, which is like an array, because we can insert at the front and the back. Okay, queues. Queues is just like a line at a theater. You can enter the queue at the back. You could also leave the queue at the front. It's known as first in, first out structure. A stack is a last in, first out structure. Uh, of course, every once in a while, you're second to last line or when someone opens a crap. So think about a queue like a line of people in a movie theater. They they go buy a ticket and they move out. They leave at the front. So to add <clears throat> elements to a queue, they go to the end. But they don't go from the end to the front to buy a ticket, right? They, they always buy a ticket from the front and then they leave. So to leave from the front, you enter at the back, but you leave at the front. It's just like a line. That's what queues are. So like the stack, the queue is implemented using wrapper to a container. The container must support front, back, push, back, add, pop, front. Okay, uh, okay. there's also associative containers. We have seen that vector is like an enhanced version array. It has all the characteristics of an array and some additional features. Unfortunately, the vector also suffers from one of the significant weaknesses of arrays. You cannot find an element using any index other than its offset in the container. Associated containers, on the other hand, provide fast random access on keys that are associated with values. The sequence containers are designed to be sequential and random access of elements using the index or the iterator. Associated containers are used for fast random access using keys. Okay, so they have maps, multi-map sets, multi-sets, bit sets. Okay, so map container. Okay, okay. Basically, a map is an easy way to find associated values. So just like a map, like on an actual map, like in a map, like a real map, to find a value on a map, like let's say you have a map of the world, you have like the name of the country. So then when you, whenever you say the name of the country, you could immediately point it to where it is on the map. Well, that's the same thing as a map in, in C++. A map in C++ allows you to have a key to associate a value. Just as a point on a paper map corresponds to a real place on Earth. So in the following example, a map is used to implement the school class shown here. So, Lord. Okay, so they have the class of a map container class. Okay, and then now, I don't know, that, that was a student class, my bad. Okay, now they create a map where they create a map. Okay, they have a template T and a class A. Show map. Okay, so they have a map where it takes in a student string, which is, which is uh, I don't know. I don't know why that's string. Wait, let me see. Okay, the name of the... Wait a second. Okay, yeah. They're, they're mapping every single name of the student to the student. That's what they're doing. So they have student Harry, student Sally, student Bill, student Peter... Then they map each single, every single, they create a map uh, called math class. Uh, this is really bad, but whatever. Here they used a uh, alias called map string map. So whenever they see school class, it's this map string student. So just replace this in school class. Okay, so then they, for now they have math class, right? This is their map. And then at each name, like Harry's name, they said to Harry. And at, at like at each Sally's name, they said it equal to Sally. So now in their, for their map, all their arrays, they have values at Harry, at Sally, and stuff like that. They see out, print out the math class, and then they show map. Okay, so for show map, they use an iterator to loop through. Start at the beginning, while well, it's not equal to N, they add one, and then they loop out, loop through it. Okay, that was pretty much it. Okay, so there's other things. There's multi-map. is a is a map class without the restriction of unique keys. Uh, more than one element has the same key. Okay, so multi-map, more than one element has the same key. Set container class is similar to map class. Is the only difference is that they're not key values. The element is only the key. Multi-set containers is a class that allows dupl duplicated key values. So a set says you can't have uh, duplication. 
does does green. The elements are not key value pairs, and the element is only lit with a key. Uh, multi set container is not the same. Bit class bit set class is this template of storing sequence of bits. Okay. Holy crap. So you can also work with al uh, the algorithm classes. Uh, so they also have standard algorithms and STD. Um, where's the standard algorithm? Where do they use the standard algorithm? Function object is an instance of a class that defines an overloaded operator. This is called a function. Um, what? Okay, function object. I don't. I don't know why. This is just a class that has one function in it. Why are they explaining this? Okay, they they just created a, f a print. All they did was just okay. They overloaded this operator parentheses, and all they do is print out t, which is the value at the template, and they loop through, and they just do do print. They call this as a, so it's a function. That's all they're doing. Uh, the operators overloaded to take inputs outputs. Um, you can now use do print like a function to print out any integer values. So the standard algorithms classes are just like a do print. They overload this parentheses so that you could use them like functions. Okay, so they have non-mutating sequence operators, which are like on the algorithm library that provides operations that don't change the elements in a sequence. These operators include for each, find, search, count. Okay. Okay, so how do they use this? For each, do print. Oh, this is, this is pretty nice. For each um, element from the beginning to the end, call the do print, which is this function, the, this overloaded operator. Oh, that's really quickly. Yeah, for each is go through every single element in the vector. Wow, that, that's actually convenient. Okay, they also have another one called fill. So what do they do? Wow, that's actually really convenient. Fill all the values from beginning, the vector of v int from beginning to end in the vector v int um, up to the fifth value, I guess. And they fill all of them with the values one. I also have a fill from five, from the fifth index to the end, they fill it with two. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, fifth index, and they fill all with twos. That's pretty good. They also have sorting. Um, you could just search the STL library for that. Merge sort, copy sort. Um, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, that's all of the templates. Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll check you guys later. Peace.